and welcome to episode 9 of FPV for Beginners. Now, this entire episode is only dealing with the analog radio, analog FPV. If you have, well, let's grab one back here. If you have the DJI system, you know, digital with the digital goggles, that's episode 10. So this is episode 9, analog. Episode 10 will have this stuff in it. So check that one out if that's what you have. Now, in this episode, you can follow along step by step with your radio to see how a model is set up, how to put sounds in it, images, displays, all the great stuff. And then you can follow step by step on your PC for how to set things up in Betaflight. So it's pretty cool. All right, enough talking. Let's get going. Here we go, setting up a model in a jumper radio. This is using OpenTX, so if you have the jumper radio, any model, or you have Radio Master, or you have any a Tyrannus radio that has OpenTX, it's all going to be the same. Just make sure, if you're unaware, a lot of radios do not come with batteries, so you will have to get your own batteries. I have batteries in the back of mine. You can plug in any type of two-cell battery in there using the balance plug. So, let's put the cover back on and get started. So for this example, I'm setting up this Gep RC Mark IV FPV drone in this radio. Here we go, let's power on our radio. Now my radio is going to talk and say a lot of words because I have it all set up for a model. So as it comes up, there we go. Quietly step back from the pilot and live to see another day. So I'll show you how to set a lot of that stuff up in this little demo here. I'm gonna go through this really fast. So there's my model, there's my Mark IV, and I have a timer at three minutes and I have like a little display here to show my my movements of my controllers just to make sure they're all working if I'm out in the field. So this is already set up. Now what I'm gonna do is set up a brand new one so that you can see how I did it. So here we go. First thing you're gonna do is press this here scroll wheel, press that in. It's gonna say model select, hit enter. You may not get the model select option because see I have like a pile of models already set up in here. You might get just the create model which is the one I wanna hit. So I'm gonna hit it again because that's what I want. There we go. So right there, it says create model, hit enter. That's what I want. It's going to pop up. It says, do you want to make a glider or plane? I want neither. So I'm going to hit this return key once and hit it again twice. There we are. We're into model 17. Yours probably says model number one because it's your first model you're creating. So over here on this side, let's get the focus going over here on this side. You have model MDL. Press that. Hold that in. And now we're into model 17. First thing we're gonna do is you see where it says model 17? We're gonna call it Mark IV. So we're gonna change that model 17 to something much more identifiable to the Mark IV. So press this in. First letter's an M, that's good. We accept that, so click it again. We go to the next letter and we're gonna turn that into the letter K. So let me just turn this. So Mark, and um, let's say I'll put that as a four. So we have Mark IV, enter, and we want to get rid of all these letters. So just keep turning your scroll wheel until you come to a blank and the letters will disappear. And there we go, all the letters are gone. Hit your return key and there you go, there's your new name. Now I should have shown you this, say that K, I want to make that a capital K instead of a lowercase K. Then uh, hit your scroll wheel again. And then when on the K, just press the scroll wheel and it will become a capital. There you go, and then hit return and you're all done. So you see our model is called Mark IV. So we're started and uh, well, we have a little bit more to do before we complete this. So now make sure you go back into the model screen. Let's see, hold that down. That's where we were. You'll notice over here, use my finger, it says model setup. We're gonna go away from the screen and go to another few screens and then come back to it. Now to go away from that screen, you'll see you have a page button right over, where is it? I can barely see it on my camera, this one. So I'm gonna press that. It goes to heli setup, and we don't have a helicopter. Next one. Flight modes, not too worried about that in this demo. And inputs. So this is something I do because I've been doing this for a long time. You really don't have to use this screen, but it really saves a lot of headaches when using beta flight. So let me show you this really quick. So right here, you've got four inputs right here. And those inputs would be these. You know, you got like your one, your two, your three, your four. They're not in that order, but that's basically what the inputs are. And you can see it sort of tells you what they are on the screen. It says your ailerons, your elevator, your throttle, and your rudder. Even on a quad or a drone, that's what they're called. It, it treats it like a plane because this radio is mostly used by people who fly planes. So that's what people are doing when they're flying a plane, their aileron, their rudder, their throttle, all these good things. Ignore all that, leave it all as it is and go down to number five. And to go down to number five, just use your scroll wheel and get to number five. 
and you see on number five it just says five but the other ones say aileron elevator throttle and rudder we want to change number five to this switch here which is going to be your arm switch so to do that and to know that that's what we've done we just press it so press the scroll wheel goes into this little screen that is going to freak you out so what do you want to call this well your input i'm going to call this arm so you should do this the same thing let's call it arm 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 because that's how we're going to arm the motors on our quad and then it says that's great what is the source so now we have to hit our return key up here and go down to source right there press enter and flick this switch flick it one a whole pile of times it doesn't matter because now the switch that you just flicked is flashing that is the switch you just touched and accept it hit enter there we go hit return and hit return again and now look what happened you have aileron elevator throttle rudder and arm you can arm the motors which is pretty sweet now when you fly a drone like this you have flight modes so you have something called horizon mode angle mode and acro mode all drones come with pretty much the three modes so you have to set a switch on your radio to tell it to go into one of those modes and we're going to start that right here so the switch i use on my radio for modes is this one right here it's a three position switch see one, two, three. I label all my switches because I have so many radios. So let's go down to that and uh, set that one up. So make sure you're still in the input screen and then go down to number six. So use your scroll wheel. Number six, hit enter. And up there, we're gonna call it modes. So M-O-D, whatever you wanna call it. So I'll just change that to mode. And then after I have the name typed in, I'm going to scroll down to the switch. What's the source? So press this. It will flash. And let's go turn this switch or let's flick the switch. And it should have shown you. Let me see. Can you get it on there? There we go. SA. It's showing you SA is the switch. I'll just get my lighting correct again. And uh, we're all good. So hit return, accept that. And now we have down here, we have arm. And we have mode and it says arm is going to be sf which is this switch here and modes to change your flight modes is this switch here now the next one i set up is just in case a drone has a beeper on it so you lose it in the grass or something like that you can flick a switch and have the beeper pop on it goes beep 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 and then you can find it easy so let's set that one up so we'll go down to number seven press enter and give it a name we're going to call it beep and then we go to the source, press enter. Which switch do you want to be your beeper? I use this switch right here. That's my beeper right here. So I flick that and that will become my beeper switch. There we are. And I hit return. You can pick any switches you want. These are just the switches I pick. So I hit return again and I will get back to the input screen. Next thing you're gonna do is over here on the page, you're just going to hit that and you get to mixes. And on the mixes page, you have to do the same thing as the input. So I'm gonna go down here and you make them all the same. So number five, channel five, is gonna be my arm switch. So I hit enter. And mix name, let's call it arm. You'll see on your screen it says arm already right here is the source, which is correct. But I always type the name at the top anyways. You could just call it A, I'll just call it A arm. So after you have the name in, then hit return. So right there it says the source and look what I can pick. I can pick the mode that we created or the rudder or whatever. So this is a way that you can change your switches around if you wish. So I would advise just to leave everything the same. Your source is arm, which is the one we set up in the previous screen. Hit return and you'll see right there, look at you have aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder and arm and do the same with channel six for modes and seven for beep. So you can do that on your own and when you're done, it will look like this. So there you go, we have mixes one to seven. It should look like that and you're all set. We're pretty much finished. Now, if you wanna add voices and all sorts of stuff, just go over here, go to the next page. You wanna go to special, so outputs, curves, global, logical, and special functions. So to set up special functions, you do exactly the same thing as I did in the previous screens. You press this button to select something. So when I select the first one, I can change this by turning this dial. I'm changing this to all sorts of things. There you go. And say I pick that SA, and then I wanna go to the next setting, override. I can press it again and change something there, play a track, play music. 
and fail safe and I can press it again. And then over here you have like, uh, you want it to be active or not. So I'm gonna show you next what this should look like. So let me just show you quickly. There you have it, I've entered all the settings you want. So the first one, SF1, set this to on, volume, and it is switch number this thing. It's This is your volume control. So if it's too loud or not loud enough, that's how you control the volume. So that's basically what I did with switch, can you even see that? Switch number one, and then the little check box is that it's on. Now for the sounds, let me just go down on my screen here. So when you set it, like I'll do the first one. So on SF2, I'm gonna hit this little enter. See over here, SF1, so SF1, play track is arm. So SF1 is this switch. So basically you highlight it, see you highlight it. As soon as you highlight it, press this, and it starts flashing, move this switch up, up and down. There. there we go, so it's already doing it. So there we go, it's, it's, it's showing that's the one you picked, SF up. And you can have it go up or down. See, I've got it up, or I can have it go down. Just means which way do you want the switch to be to have that sound go off. Arm motors. So there we go. So when you have that correct, just press enter and then go to the next one, play track, because that's what you want it to do. You're saying, hey, when I flick that switch, play the track. Well, what track do you want me to play? I want to play this one, arm. So I press enter. You'll get a list of commands you can put in there. So say I didn't want it to say arm, I want it to say arm de. So you pick arm de right here. And watch if I hit this. It says arm now, it doesn't say arm motors. Arm. So I liked arm motors better. So put it back on arm and here we go. Arm motors. Like that one better. All right, so you do that for the rest of them and you'll be all set. Just do a screenshot of what you see here. I'll hold this nice and still. Do a screenshot and set them up yourself, just like that. Maybe you wanna put a picture of your drone, the drone you purchased in there. You can put pictures of your drone, you can download them from the internet and then plug in your USB cable up here to your computer and then just transfer the picture over to here. Just make sure they're very, very small inside. You'll see it when you connect this to your computer, you will see other pictures in the picture images uh, directory folder. Take a look at those images. They're all a specific size. I think they're like 192 pixels by, I can't remember something. Make sure whatever pictures you put in here fit the same uh, you know, dimensions across and down of pixels. It's very easy to do. Now the radio does come with a few pictures itself. So maybe I wanna put a picture in here. So let me just show you how to do that. You're gonna go back to your model. Hold that down. And there we are, we're in Mark IV. And just right below it, it says image. So then when I go down to image, hold this in and just pick something. So whatever I pick here will work. So. That's how I put my Mark IV in because I've already put Mark IV right here. That's me, I stuck those in. But uh, let's say you wanna pick something else. Uh, I don't know, let's say you wanna pick at the bottom, I think they have something like 285. Anything with the 250, that's like a drone. So there we go. And there's the drone right there. So that's your image, you can put any picture you want. All right, so the next thing we'll do is bind this to our little uh, drone here so that they talk to each other. So the first thing you do when you bind a quad is you get rid of the props. So I'm gonna take the props off, all four props off, and then I'll bind it. There we go, props are off. Next thing you have to do is find the receiver on your drone. So right here, there's my receiver, this little thing down here. It is an XM Plus receiver, FR Sky XM Plus. Let me just spin it around so you can see it even better on the other side. All right, here's a close up of the receiver. Now when you look at an FR Sky receiver, you'll see all these circuits on board. What you wanna look for is this tiny little piece of gold right here. See it, it's a tiny piece of gold. That's actually a switch. But it's not a switch like uh, your light switch that you would use, you could flick on and off. It's very fragile, so you have to be careful. So to put this tiny, tiny receiver into bind mode so that it knows that it wants to connect to a radio, you have to press down on that gold foil. You'll feel it when you press it down. And at the same time, you have to put a battery, connect a battery to the drone. That's why I have the props off so nothing goes wrong. So. When you hold that down, and while holding it down, connect a battery, this will go into bind mode. And if you do it correctly, you'll get a red light and a green light, and then on your radio, you're gonna go bind, you're gonna press the bind button, and they'll talk together. And uh, I'll show you right now how that works. So first thing, let's go over here and go to our bottle, press that, and then turn your scroll wheel to go up. We're gonna go up until you see over here, internal RF, that's what you want. And it says mode off. That means you wanna use the internal components of this radio. So we're gonna go there and I'm gonna turn them on. So let's turn you on, internal, on. 
Oh, look what happened. I switched it to on and it went to multi and that's correct. So you go to multi and then you go over. I'm going to press enter. I want multi. Yes. I'm going to go over to the next one. Fly sky. Don't want that. I want FR sky because it's an FR sky receiver. Press that in and let's go to FR sky. So turn it until you get to FR sky and it should look like that. FR sky, press it in and then go over to where it says D16. Some drones are D8 and some are D16. So if you ever have a problem where it's not binding, just change this to D8. Usually small, small drones or ones from Emacs are D8 and ones from other companies are D16. So leave it on D16 for this Then go down to bind, leave it on bind. And then when you put the receiver on your drone into bind mode, you're going to press it like this. And it's going to say telemetry on. You say sure, just leave it 1 to 8. If you're never sure, just leave it at 1 to 8. Sometimes if it doesn't work, you might have to go to 1 to 9 to 16. Most times it works at 1 to 8. And then you would press this and it will chirp. Listen, that is the sound of the radio binding. And then when it binds, you press the return key to say it's all good. So we haven't done that yet. We haven't done the bind thing yet. So I'm going to go back up and get it all set again. So I'm going to press bind. And then I'm ready. So the next time I hit this, it's going to chirp and go into bind mode. So I'm just going to put the radio aside and grab our little quad. I have a battery here all set to go. So I'm going to press the little gold foil button down and connect this battery while still holding this press down. And it should go into bind mode. This is going to be kind of clumsy because I'm looking through the screen on the back of a camera. So this is going to be awkward. Let's see if I can do this. Now this is what I'm going to use to press the button. It's an actual screwdriver to take off the bolts off of a quad. I would not advise newbies to use this because you might damage the foil and then you have to replace the receiver. Use a pencil or something, but or something plastic. I'm going to use this because I've been doing it for so many years, so it's pretty easy for me. And uh, I know how much pressure to put. So here we go. There we go. I have it pressed down and uh, just connect the battery back here. You don't have to put it all the way in. Just get some power so it goes into bind mode. Watch my little lights at the bottom. Let those sounds go. It won't make any more sounds. Release this. And let me just push this in. Bring this close and look at the lights. If you see a red light and a green light down there, do you see it? Right down in here, red and green, then you're in bind mode. See that? All right. So I take my radio over here. I've got it all set up, ready to go. I'm going to hit this. That should flash. So can I show you in the same screen? Let's try this. And that's what you want to see happen. That means binding is happening. So let me press it. See it flashing? This radio is now bound to that receiver and you're all good. So simple, eh? Yay. So now that you have them connected, you can disconnect your battery. There we go. And on your radio, hit your return, go back to your model as if you're going to fly now connect your battery and watch this so that starts up no props on it check your little receiver down here that you have a green light which you do can you see that there we go so that means your the binding is complete it's all good and on your radio everything should be good and your switches will not work you know why because you have to set them up in beta flight however sometimes if i hit the arm switch it should not work because i haven't set it up in beta flight let's try it oh it works look at that the motors are spinning well sometimes you luck in <laughs> but i'm going to show you in beta flight how to set it up to do the motors because if you get the motors spinning well then you can use your throttle do all sorts of stuff let's kill that so it looks like we're pretty well all set to go. Now that we have the drone bound to the radio, two other things I want to show you really quick that you can set up. So I'm just going to go back into model. Where's my model? There we are. And the first thing we're going to do is timer. So let's go to timer right here. You can set this to all sorts of things. So when I go to on, you have throttle percentage. And I go over here and I set this to three minutes. And you can give it a name if you want. I just leave it called timer one. Now the next thing to show you, there's our bind. We've already bound this one here, but we have to set up a fail safe. Where are you fail safe? There it is, fail safe. So fail safe is this. Let's see, here's my quad. Can it even fit in the picture? No, it can't. Anyway, so I'm flying along, la 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 la, having a great old time, and I fly out of range and I lose the quad. Well, you don't want this thing to keep flying forever and ever. You want it to do something. So fail safe is, what do you want the quad to do when you go out of range or lose connection with it? So you set it up here. And fail safe mode is always set to no pulses. So let's turn that and go to no pulses. And there we go. Hit your return key. And you're all set. 
And as I mentioned, if you want to put a timer over here, you can. You can put a timer up here or there by pressing this button here. So if you press that, you go into this menu and then go down and select set up widgets. And you can see we have a widget here, a widget here and a widget there. So on the first one, let's just make sure, let's pick that one. You can see it's a solid square red, press enter. And what do we want in there? Let's go, we want to put our picture. So you can set it up and customize it as you wish. Where's my picture? I just saw it. There it is, enter. And now let's go to one of these widgets. So I'll go over, I'll put this one up here. I'm going to put a timer because we did set up our timer. I don't want to gauge. I want a timer. There we go. And yes, use timer one. And uh, that's good. Return, return. And there we are. So to get out of the widgets, I'm not putting another one here. Hit return, return. We'll just go back to our main screen. There's our timer. If you want to reset that timer, press this button in over here and go to reset and then go to reset timer one. And we're back at three minutes and say you were flying this drone and you press this throttle it will start the countdown. See, 259, 258. And when three minutes are up, it will tell you. And that means you better land because you're getting low on battery power. You can set it to any minutes you want. All right, I have the GEP RC Mark IV right here. And what you want to look for is the flight controller. And the flight controller right here has a little micro USB input. That's what you're looking for. You won't find any other micro USB input on this drone any place. So that's the one you want. And that's what you're going to connect a USB cable into there. And the other cable end is going to go into your computer over there. Now for this next part, you're going to need your Mark IV drone. You're going to need your radio powered on. Let me just power this on. There we go. So radio, drone, MTS. and get yourself a battery have a battery this is my computer screen right here i'm not doing a screen capture because then you can't see my finger pointing at stuff i think it's easier if i just point at things so on my screen away down here i have beta flight configurator can you see that probably not it's probably pretty small doesn't matter i'm going to put links below this video to where you can download it you need beta flight configurator it works on a pc or a mac so you're all set with that so i'm going to open mine up there we go, mine started up, and it's actually telling me on the screen there's a newer version. Now, the reason you'd want to download a newer version is a lot of people like to flash their flight controller and put the latest version of Betaflight on it. If you are a newbie, a beginner in the FPV world, never do that, never do that. Wait until you know what you're doing before you do something like that. So for this video demo, I'm just gonna hit close. I'm not gonna do any updates. Now, one thing very important to notice on the left-hand side of your screen, it says hardware and it's got all these drivers. If Betaflight does not work for you when you connect your drone, you must download those drivers to get it to work on your PC. Here I have my USB cable connected to my PC and I am just going to plug it into my little drone. If I can get that in, trying to do this looking behind a camera, there we go. Light comes on and Betaflight back here should start up. There we go. See as everything's moving here. As I'm moving my drone around, it's moving too, which tells me it is connected. We're all good. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug a battery into the back, but I've got to make sure my radio is on and select the Mark IV that we set up. So here we go. All right, so you can see my drone up here. Since we're connected and I know everything's working, I'm going to plug in a battery. The reason I'm plugging in the battery with no props on is because... Here, I'll wait till that stops singing is because a lot of times if you have a flight controller sometimes flight controllers do not have enough power to connect to your radio so there's not enough power in it to do both so by putting a battery on you have enough power all right so here we are in my screen what you really have to look at is over here on the left hand side that's everything you want and you're not going to set up very much so the first screen is called setup see the tab at the top ignore everything on here we're not touching that next one down is let me get my mouse over here. Ports. We're not messing with this either. Let's go down to configuration. This one is where you can take a look. See here, it shows you how your motors spin. It's got little arrows and it's showing this is props in. So this shows me the flight controller wants to spin the props inward. So that's what I was saying in a previous episode. Betaflight will tell you which way your props spin and which way to put them on. So we're gonna leave configuration, go past power and battery, go past PIDs. Never play with PIDs. You can always tell newbies. Newbies always play with the PIDs and they think it makes a huge difference. It makes a difference. It messes up your quad. Don't play with that unless you know what you're doing. And let's go down to your receiver. Now, here's why we wanna make sure everything's working. So here's my radio. And uh, what I wanna see is when I move this, 
See that? The throttle moves, so that's correct. So if I move my throttle up, throttle is going up. If I move my throttle down, throttle goes down. If I yaw to the left, yaw to the left works. If I yaw to the right, yaw to the right works. And I also have my pitch over here. Pitch forward, pitch back, and roll, and roll. And they should all work. If it's all backwards and messed up on you, all you have to do is, I'm gonna show you over here, Right over here, it says channel map. See, it says, mine says A-E-T-R-1-2-3. If yours is messed up and you pushed one of these, you pushed the throttle, and next thing you know, it was doing a pitch instead, or something's messed up, change your throttle map. All you have to do is go to the down arrow, change it to something else, to Spectrum or FR Sky. It gives you two options. After you change it, you must go and hit the save button down here. As soon as you hit the save button, then the settings are saved back into your drone. Try your little controls on your radio and it should be fine. The tab we want for today is the modes tab. So let's go into that. This here on your screen is not going to look like mine. Mine is already set up. Yours is going to look something terrible like this. Let me see. I'll just go like uh, this and like this. It's probably going to look like nothing like maybe like that. Yeah, it might look like that. Here, I'll even get rid of this one. All right, so yours might look like this. You might have the first one, arm disabled or whatever, something like that. So this is where you must set up the switches from your radio that you assigned to Betaflight, which will then put those switches into your quad. So here we go. So we know the first switch we set up was this one down here to be our arm switch, to go arm and arm. So you have to set that up in Betaflight. So let me show you. So that switch is called Auxiliary 1. Make sure it says Auxiliary 1 here. And then you see the slider? You can slide it. I can slide that around the screen. I can move it, make it longer, make it shorter. So let's keep it, you know, pretty short. Below that slider, you're going to see a little icon that can move. And it will move as you touch the little arm switch on your radio. See, my little yellow thing is over there. And if I click it again, the yellow thing is now over here. So wherever you put this slider is where it's going to engage. So for me, I'm going to leave it over there. So that means whenever that yellow thing hits this slider, the motors will arm. You can set yours up different. If you want yours to arm when the switch is over here, that's fine. So you can see my quad's going crazy because it thinks it's arming. Next you ought to set up is your flight mode. So over here, if you don't have them, you should have angle and horizon mode. So let's set up angle mode. So we go down to angle, it's the next one down, add range. Click on add range and that's gonna be your switch over here, this switch here, which I believe is auxiliary two. We set it up as auxiliary two. So let's pick auxiliary two, that, pick number two. And let's see if it works. When I move this, that little yellow little icon here should move. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. It moves three positions because it's a three position switch. So we want angle mode to be one of the positions here, here, or here. I like mine in the center. So I put my little yellow thing in the center right here. So I like it to be right in the center. So when my switch is in the middle, it's in angle mode. When it's in a different position, it's in a different mode. So middle to me is angle mode. Next one we're gonna set up is horizon mode. Horizon mode's on the same switch. So we go add range, go to auxiliary two. And there we go. I always set my horizon mode up to be over here. It's just something I've done from day one. Don't ask me why. So that means when my switch is farthest away from me, I always think farthest away is landing. I'm in horizon mode. So you see right here, the yellow tab is right here on horizon mode. And this makes the whole thing horizon. If I move the switch, my three position switch, next it goes over. Now we're in angle mode because this one's effective. And when I move it again, it goes over here. If you have nothing, so angle and horizon are here. If you have no modes, no yellow right here, that means it's acro mode. That means there are no restrictions on your drone. So that's what a lot of pros fly in. That's what I fly in all the time. No, I'm not a super pro, but that's what I fly in. And uh, acro mode gives you full control. You can flip the drone, do all sorts of rolls, rolls, flips, anything you want. Next one we'll set up is our beeper. So look on the left, you got head free, fail safe, and there's beeper, add range. So on ours, I said this here would be your beeper switch. That's what we set up. So that would be auxiliary three, because we went one switch here, which would be one. The next switch would be two. And this switch here, we set it as three. So let's set that to auxiliary three. So I always set my beeper up so the switch is all the way over here, because I never have it engaged, unless something goes wrong and I lose the drone. So that means you want to pull the switch all the way towards you. 
and there's beeper and it's beeping away. And if I take it off, there we go, it's all good. So that's how I have it all set up and make sure you hit this button here, save or else you'll lose everything. So I have to hit save, ta-da, and it's all saved. And that is how my drone is set up. Now, if you look down the left-hand side, you can see there's many more things to set up. I do not set them up. I do have flip over after crash, but we're not gonna do that in this video. So we'll just leave it as that. So as long as you hit the save button over here, life is good. Then all you do is hit the disconnect button over here, disconnect, we're out of beta flight. And then take your little drone here and pull the USB out. We're disconnected and life is good. And then disconnect your battery and then reconnect your battery and see if everything works. See if the arm works, the modes work, the beeper works with your radio. All right, I hope you found the steps pretty easy to set up your models in your radio and Betaflight. I'm just scratching the surface here because this is a beginner FPV video, not going in depth. We're not gonna go play with the PIDs and all that other stuff that's just gonna mess up your drone and have it going crazy. That is something you're gonna do after flying for about a year and you get more experience and you know what you wanna do. Then you can go mess around and set up other stuff. But for now, that's just the basics to get you out the door and flying. Now, let me give you one little tip before I end this video. And that is if you go and buy yourself another drone, so you have one drone, so one model in the radio and you go buy another drone because it's pretty addictive. When you set the next drone up in your radio, you do not have to select create new model. Instead, highlight the drone you already created and then select duplicate it. So you just wanna make a copy of it. And when you make a copy of it, you'll now have two models in the radio. Go and rename the one that you just copied and give it the name of your new drone. And about 99% of it will automatically be set up in the radio. Everything will work. You just have to connect it to Betaflight, do our little settings in Betaflight, and you're all set to get outdoor flying in no time at all. And in the future, if you buy yourself a drone with a digital system, then watch the next episode, because I'm going to show you how to set up a digital drone with the DJI FPV system. It's much simpler than everything we did here today, but you still have to know a few things. So watch that video. All right, so we're at the end of this video. If you have any questions, post them below. As long as you ask questions about the video, I can help you. Don't post something about, I have this type of radio, which I have no idea what it is. And I have this type of problem, which I have no idea what it is. Because honestly, FPV, it's very difficult to fault find or help people out if you don't use exactly the same gear that I'm using and do exactly what I'm doing here. All right, if you have questions on this video, post them below. I will try to get back to you. But for now, I say thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I'll catch you in the next video where we look at the digital system. Until then, take care.